Let me tell you a story. It's 2001. I'm staring at a CRT monitor that's roughly the size of Belgium and I'm shouting Komme zu mir, Bruder, as I've just built the perfect fortress. Multiple layers of thick Germanic concrete, bomb towers as far as the eye could see, and an army of Teutonic knights ready to march out and wreck a few hundred road raiders that were marching on my city in an attempt to stop me winning the game by building a magnificent feudal wonder. I've always loved the idea of turtling in real-time strategy games, of managing my resources perfectly, allowing my enemy to come to me and attack my walls to no avail like King Arthur's assault on the French knights. <laughs> Maybe it's the introvert in me, maybe it's my lifelong dream of wanting to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle that results in me playing RTS games with a strategy that infuriates opponents. The point is, is that these are ideas that are present in They Are Billions. It's this massively popular game at the moment, something I properly experienced firsthand for myself over the weekend. On the surface, They Are Billions, it, it sounds simple enough. You've got a post-apocalypse colony that you need to grow, shambling mobs of the undead dotted around the map, and your expansion is regularly interrupted by escalating hordes of the bastards who are keen for a leg of Larry's supper. Which sounds easy enough to follow, right? You just build an army, you hold the fort, and you wait for the bell to ring and signal your victory. They are billions, it is that, and so, so much more. While the early access version only has a handful of maps and a single permadeath survival mode, it's also one of the most intricate simulations of running a community after civilization has fallen. It's not overly complex in its structure, but it is persistent in the attention that you need to divide between growing your economy, your city and your defenses. Are your villagers bringing in enough gold? Do you have a steady workforce whose efforts you can dedicate to towards bolstering these city defenses? Have you arranged your city blocks in a manner that allows troops to easily traverse through town to repel an outbreak. It's questions like this that define the experience, as every advantage brings with it a disadvantage that needs to be addressed as you grow beyond your walls. Wooden barricades can only hold the infected back for so long, while your defenses need to be constantly adjusted and improved upon. Think the walls of Attack on Titan cities, built to withstand an assault as you create choke points, with which to funnel the infected into kill zones as your inner defenses get to work. Now I'm about 20 hours in so far and I'm utterly obsessed. They are billions, it plays like clockwork with the human lives as you take apart and tinker with the reality of surviving in a world that very much wants you dead. I'm addicted, I'm, I'm obsessed with creating a city that stands as a massive middle finger monument to the walking dead and their attempts to bust in. And that's where the real magic of They Are Billions lies. It's a strategy game where the stakes feel very real, a tactics experiment without any sense of complacency as you start to slowly realize that no matter how well prepared you are, the apocalypse is more than ready to run over and totally stuff your day up. All of this is wrapped up in a much needed streamlining of the RTS genre that never results in they are players ever feeling stale or tedious. If you long for the days of RTS games in the vein of Age of Empires and Command and Conquer, they are billions, it proudly carries that torch while adding plenty of its own unique flavor to a formula of pitch perfect balance that has been buried for far too long. Fortunately, the RTS genre is alive and well in They Are Billions.